Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In this update, we're going to be talking about a June cooldown and some pleasant temperatures coming up for the north and southeast, as well as some chilly temperatures for the northwest. So if you're if you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and welcome to my weather community where I will keep you updated in all things weather related. All right, so let's delve into the details. What you're actually looking at right now is the Man and Julia oscillation called the MJO. And you can see we are predominantly in phase two and phase three, and those are your colder phases. And on this right chart here, if you look at phase two, it has the cool down and uh, much of the southeast as well as the northeast and some colder weather for the northwest. And that's what you're going to be experiencing over the next week. So let's walk you through the surface map. Here's an outlook for Thursday coming up on June the 11th. And we had that pretty strong cold front that plowed through much of the country now. And now it's going to basically stall along the southeast coast and bring in some heavy rain. But back behind it, some really pleasant and comfortable temperatures uh, back, back behind the front. And the same thing on Friday with this front stalling, it's going to cause some heavy rain along the coast, along, to, along the South Carolina and North Carolina, Virginia coastline. And we've actually got a reinforcing shot of uh, cooler temperatures uh, for the weekend. All right, so let's walk you through some of these uh, temperatures. If you take a look at the overall uh, high temperatures for Thursday, uh, June 11th, we've got a pocket of uh, 60s and 70s for predominantly much of the Ohio Valley um, into, into the Northeast. So, so pretty pleasant uh, for uh, the middle of June. We've got some, some 90s over Texas where it's been basically high and dry, but honestly, that is pretty much normal uh, for you guys in Texas and Oklahoma for this time of year. And the only place that is baking is the desert Southwest in Phoenix and to where they normally just get those uh, higher temperatures. And we do have some little bit cooler temperatures trying to sneak in, but if not colder temperatures going to be on board for the Northwest uh, later on throughout the week and especially uh, into next week. Well, we'll go over those temperatures here in a little bit. But by Friday afternoon, by Friday, those high temperatures again come come in into the Tennessee, Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley, Kentucky. 70s so you know 70 75 degrees for a high that is just hitting a sweet spot that's just a pleasant comfortable temperature and that's what you're going to experience and not only that but hardly any uh the the dew points are low and so the humidity values are low as well so these will be pretty comfortable uh feels like temperatures um, as well and some of those uh 60s if not 50s will be creeping in into uh new england especially into uh portions of maine and uh, if not Vermont and into Connecticut. But even the 70s will dip down all the way into Florida. So you're going to be experiencing some of those uh, pleasant uh, temperatures as well. But by Sunday, you can see a little bit of that reinforcing shot of colder air that we looked at the surface map earlier in the video. That's going to start to filter into parts of the Northeast. Now you're talking highs on uh, Saturday afternoon around six o'clock. You're talking getting into the 50s and portions of Michigan and portions of uh, Wisconsin as well. And those 50s will try to tap into uh, portions of New York and Pennsylvania, a lot of the New England states and especially into Maine. And that will modify some as it as we go down into the southeast, but still pleasant temperatures uh, for much of the southeast. And you can look to the northwest now where they've got a, a, a pretty pretty strong trough that's coming in, a reinforcing shot. And if not some chilly temperatures, you're going to be experiencing uh, for the first half of the week for next week. And you can see we're pretty much high and dry in Texas, but not, not terribly too bad for uh, the, the middle of June. But if we take you through uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday around six o'clock now, you can see those uh, widespread comfortable temperatures kind of hanging tough uh, in the southeast, much of the Carolinas, uh, much of the Tennessee Valley into, into Kentucky and into the Virginia states and the Ohio Valley. Again, this area is going to be experiencing just along the coast, though, uh, some of that widespread heavy rain with that stalled front. And there'll be actually a secondary trough that we'll look at here shortly. 
But again, back behind it, those pleasant temperatures really settle in into uh, Pennsylvania and uh, in New York and getting those uh, lower 50s, if not upper uh, lower 60s uh, by then. So pretty comfortable. But that colder air, again, will be filtering in into the northwest uh, along that secondary trough. But if we take a look at the overall Monday morning temperatures, and that's when you can start to really feel that transition into those colder, colder temperatures, especially in the Northwest, where we've got, if not freezing temperatures coming up in portions of uh, Idaho and uh, uh, portions of Montana and, and getting into uh, uh, Wyoming here and portions of, of Utah, getting experiencing those, uh, thir you know, 35, uh, 45 degree low low morning temperatures so that's going to feel pretty chilly uh, especially for this time of year but as you can see here in the in the northeast we're going to be experiencing some of those uh, uh widespread 50s with that secondary front as well but i stopped it right here because i was going to show you a little bit of the rainfall and you can pretty much see where it's been high and dry where those higher temperatures in the mid sections of the country in texas and portions of uh, kansas and nebraska where there's just pretty much in a dead zone where you're not going to get any of the precipitation that's where you're going to be experiencing the warmer temperatures but on the outskirts along that stalled front along the carolina coast into the virginia's states you're going to experience in those heavier rain showers uh, tapping into that stalled front uh, tapping into some of those uh, uh warmer gulf moisture uh, temperatures and uh, elevating uh, the precipitation values anywhere from two to three, if not four inches in spots and uh, along the Carolina coast. And there's gonna be, with, with, the man, with an MJO into phase two and three, there's a possibility of a tropical development. There's not terribly too much signs. If it won't develop, it's still gonna be a, a heavy rainmaker. But again, all that moisture is gonna feed pretty much off to uh, the, the south and southeast and more or less uh, hug the coast, especially as you get into Florida, uh, into the southeast. But by Tuesday, we've got a secondary, if not stronger trough uh, digging in from the Northwest now, bringing in some much below average temperatures and a reinforcing shot of a trough developing into the Southeast again, reinforcing those rain chances, uh, if not heavier rain chances by then. And even that uh, some of those cooler temperatures will settle back into the part in, in that part of the uh, country with those widespread uh, 50s and 60s uh, for the Ohio Valley. And by uh, Tuesday morning, you're gonna experience again, a reinforcing shot of some of those 35 to 45 degree uh, low temperatures in Oregon and to Washington and to portions of Idaho and Montana. But if we extend it to uh, Wednesday, those colder temperatures really start to hang on. And so uh, you're gonna experience a you know two to three, four day swath where you're gonna experience some really uh, chilly mornings uh, coming up for the Northwest, uh, earlier portions of next week. And this air will start to modify as the heat, as on the dry side, the fry side, and it just expands over Texas and it's taking advantage. It's tapping in all that uh, moisture that was uh, in the ground for the for spring. It did rain a lot in spring, but now we're drying out. So as the air dries out, as the soil dries out, it, this, the center part of the country is going to be able to heat up um, and bump those temperatures up higher as the ridge just starts to expand and deepen uh, over that area. But again, on the outskirts, that's where you're going to be experiencing those uh, pleasant temperatures. And that will hang on all the way to Thursday. It really doesn't start to, to modify until the end of next week. But those 60s and 70s were starting to creep up into those 70 degree morning lows. So We've got about a week here that we're going to experience some some pretty pleasant temperatures and even in the northwest this air will start to uh modify as well so uh, but as far as the precipitation outlook again with it's kind of a one-two punch for uh, the carolina coast and the virginia virginia states where they're going to get that stalled front earlier in the week on thursday and friday and then a reinforcing sh shot of a trough coming in early next week uh, pumping in, taking advantage of those uh, phase two and phase three of the MJO, we've got those elevated uh, Gulf uh, moisture feeds, and that will pump the, the moisture feed into Florida, uh, into the into the Carolina states, 
dumping some heavier rains and we could be dealing with a flooding threat uh, starting uh, next week as this trough deepens and as you get to those uh, earlier rains uh, in, the, in the beginning of the week as well. So we definitely have a flood threat in that part of the country. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. If you did find value in this video, please give this a thumbs up. So YouTube will share this and uh, definitely uh, share with your friends on uh, social media and subscribe to my channel and catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.